Oil rose more than 1 percent on Monday to near seven-year highs hit in the previous session. While supply concerns and political tensions in Eastern Europe and the Middle East put prices on track for their biggest monthly gain in almost a year. Brent crude rose 1.2 percent to $91.10 a barrel in early trade on Monday after adding 69 cents on Friday. The front month contract for March delivery expires later in the day. The most active Brent contract for April delivery was trading at $89.51, up 99 cents or 1.1 percent. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude added $1.07 to $87.89 a barrel, having gained 21 cents on Friday. The benchmarks recorded their highest level since October 2014 on Friday, $91.70 and $88.84 respectively, and their sixth straight weekly gain. They were headed for about 17% gain this month, the most since February 2021. Underlying anxiety about global supply shortages coupled with ongoing geopolitical risks have caused the market to start the week on a strong note, with an expectation that OPEC Plus will keep the existing policy of gradual increase of production all prices will likely stay on a bullish sentiment this week. Analysts are predicting Brent to remain above $90 and WTI to head toward $90. And joining me now live from Washington, D.C. to discuss this further is energy security analyst Ahmed Chakri. Ahmed, thank you so much for joining us once again. Thanks for having me. So now the world's top oil producers will meet on Wednesday to discuss the future of the commodity. Um, what sort of decisions can we expect uh, for them to take and what will the future hold for us given the cold, uh, the COVID pandemic and Russia's possible invasion of Ukraine? Yes, as you mentioned, we have a new uh, OPEC meeting by next Wednesday. And as you all know, uh, uh, from, since the middle of uh, summer, OPEC Plus and OPEC uh, for, uh, creating a balance in the market has a plan to uh, gra gradually increase uh, every month. And I, am, I think in the uh, next meeting, uh, all OPEC Plus member agrees to uh, continue and have to extend current the production capacity and increase, I mean, gradually increase. About the, uh, the possible effect of uh, Russia invading Ukraine, as you are aware, uh, EU mainly depending on the natural gas from the, uh, Russia. And today, Catherine uh, Emir, uh, Emirates uh, visit uh, Washington and at present discussing with the Biden and the administration asked the Qatar to increase uh, LNG production capacity to export to EU to uh, some, uh, I mean, depend, uh, reduce dependency on uh, uh, Russian gas. But in the short term, uh, 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 there is no more option, option on the table for EU to find an alternative uh, for uh, Russian gas in its uh, uh, energy mix. But in the meantime, Azerbaijan, Qatar, uh, US, and maybe uh, Israel natural gas via Turkey, it will be uh, the best option for reducing EU uh, dependency of Russian natural gas. So now, in the event uh, that the United States decides to sanction uh, Russia for its activities, uh, what potential impact will it have on energy, given that Russia is responsible for um, providing a large chunk of oil and gas for Europe? Yes, you know, uh, this is not the first time that U.S. imposed sanctions against uh, Russia energy sector. And uh, during the Biden uh, Trump administration and after that, during the Biden administration, both administrations uh, imposed some sanctions against construction and completing Nord Stream seeking. And also by 2014, when Russia, uh, uh, as you all know, uh, they, uh, tried to change the status of Crimea. Uh, at uh, that time, EU and the U.S. sanctioned against uh, uh, Russia in, uh, energy industry. If the uh, U.S. and EU try to uh, reimpose sanctions, uh, it will be affected to Russia, uh, 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 the mainly production capacity in the midterm. But in the short term, I think Russia will be able to control and manage the effect of the sanction. But uh, due to we have this shortage in uh, natural gas and energy supply in the market, and there is no alternative to finding a uh, 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 for uh, Russian natural gas in the uh, EU market. Maybe Russia trying to decrease the volume of natural gas exporting to uh, the EU. But, but I have mentioned that 
Uh, Russia needs EU for saving the natural gas, and EU needs Russia for its energy security. Uh, it is possible to use to uh, Russia use the uh, energy weapon to gain more uh, geopolitical uh, benefit or uh, political benefit by coming uh, months or maybe weeks. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, China is the major uh, destination for Russia, LNG and uh, natural gas. And I, I am sure that currently and Putin himself don't want to, to lose the its main uh, energy consumer, but it is possible to use energy weapon. If uh, Russia will use the energy weapon, we have to see uh, the deepening up current energy uh, crisis, and it will be not, uh, it will be against our EU energy security and national security. And as you know, we have a very uh, cold uh, winter, and it will be double the effect of uh, any uh, using of energy weapon as a sanction by Russia. So now one thing we're trying to understand is OPEC nations and other top producers are struggling to meet targets uh, of increasing production to 400,000 barrels per day. But since we're seeing a reduction in COVID cases globally, will these top producers um, decide on a given number during the key meeting on Wednesday? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, both OPEC and uh, International Energy Agency expected that to reach a global oil demand by mid of, by mid of next summer. Uh, to uh, equal the before our pandemic, and it, 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 it means that we need more uh, production by OPEC and OPEC plus members. And OPEC at present is very satisfied from the uh, current uh, oil price and current uh, uh, oil dynamic in the energy market, was trying to uh, keep the uh, price and production level by coming months, but uh, if they will uh, if they be not, uh, uh, I mean, made the decision to gradually increase, it means that uh, less demand in the market and uh, more uh, increase in, in price it's against the U.S. and EU and other energy consumers. And I'm sure that the OPEC Plus try to continue uh, uh, this current uh, decision to gradually increase. And by um, next mid, next summer, we can see production level will be increased. And if uh, Iran and four plus, uh, four, uh, the four plus one group made it uh, new nuclear deal by coming months, and according to the last uh, estimate, it is expected to uh, reach new deal by end of February. And if Iran gets back to market, we can see oversupply, I mean, more supply in the market, and it directly affected the oil price, and oil price will be declined. In, in such a situation, uh, in the next maybe uh, OPEC plus meeting, uh, but OPEC plus try to keep current production level or maybe decrease. All right, Omid Chakri, thank you so much for taking out the time to speak to us. Always a pleasure.